on a Monday morning. Like I've always said, I'm not a fan of Monday mornings. I never have, I never will be. And this particular Monday morning, I'm definitely not a fan. My name is Wally Scott, welcome on the show. Let me read the sad news to you first. <coughs> and this is a particular um, topic I've always discussed all of my career. It's put me in trouble too many times. Let me talk about it first, I want to, you know what I mean. Now, a former technical director of the Nigeria Football Federation, Kashima Lalo is dead. The death of Laloko was confirmed by his son, Adewali, late Sunday night. Laloko, who was 76, died on Sunday in Lagos after a brief illness. He had been feeling weak before he died on Sunday. It was as a result of weakness, not COVID-19, Adewali added. The late Laloko will be buried, according to Muslim rights, on Tuesday at his Bonagon residence in Abeokuta, Ogun State. Laloko established the Pepsi Football Academy in Lagos in November 1992 and has produced some of the country's brightest football talents ever since. This is where my getting into trouble comes into it. I will get into trouble very soon. But before I do that, I have a coach, a football coach on the show today. His name is Olajide Akinyelu. Good morning, sir. Good morning, coach. Okay, I don't have coach yet, but I also have, uh, later on the show, I've got Wale Adekoya. We call him Prof. They will both come on the show later, but my point is today, We've lost a legend in Laloko. He single-handedly went to this um, soft drink giants, got their approval, got money off them, got to the Agege Stadium, the now Agege Stadium now, got that space, and um, began the Pepsi Football Academy out of nothing. We know about days that we hear that um, Laloko really wants to give the young boys transport fare to go home most times. Some of the boys will need water after the game. You have to buy them sachet water. Some won't have money to eat. You'll buy them food and joke about it and say, don't die on my neck. Oh. You know? That was La Loco. That was the typical La Loco. Okay, I've got um, a football coach. I'll start with him first off. Um, his name is Olajide Akinyelu. Good morning, Kochi. Good morning. It's good to have you on the show, sir. I also have Olawale Adekoya on the show. We call him Prof for Sports and the List of Repute. Good morning, Olawale. I salute you. My name's Sake. What is called? Yes. <laughs> Good morning to you. Good morning, Sual. Be one. Good morning. I, I, I'll stick with Prof. Now, Coach, let me start with um, Laloko first off. He was a coach with a difference. He took care of those boys in the Pepsi Academy like his own children. Transport fare, food money from his pockets. What can you say about a man, Kashima Ola Loko? There was a man. There was a coach. Okay. Um, can I go on? Yeah, go on. I can hear you. Um, well, um, definitely in the, in the coaching world, the man is a legend. You know, we all know him. He is a very serious minded person, disciplinarian. And he was one of our tutors and the CAF courses I attended. So there is no doubt he's someone that if you're looking up to in, in, their own, in their own generation, definitely is a name that most coaches of, this, of our generation you know, look up to. Now, um, Olawale, uh, Prof, let me come to you now. How would you speak yeah. of Kashima? Did you ever meet him? How would you speak of Kashima Ulaloko? Well, indeed, uh, what is called uh, people, personalities, institutions like um, Liz Kashima Olaloko, so hard to use, uh, uh, to ascribe to him in the past tense, but that's the reality. You see, these are personalities that typify, that embody what coaching is all about. As a coach, you are a shepherd. You are a keeper of men. If you work without thank you, it's about passion, it's about dedication and love for the work. It, it can't be anything benefit. It has to be the love. And that's why I say coaching at that level is a call. If you have the call, good luck. If you don't, then you and the team that you manage indeed will be a problem. So any day, any time, I would say uh, Coach Laduko is... Uh, uh, somebody who is a perfect example of what a coach should be. Let me come to you now, um, Coachy. Coach, this is where I become an iconoclast. This is where Wiley Scott becomes the troublemaker. 
Now, we have heard in the past that our best legs that we take to our international competitions are not always our best legs. That the coaches that we have had in the past have always been coaches who take money from the players. So at the end of the day, the best legs don't have money to give the coaches. It's the second best legs that actually go, which is our best legs are left at home and second best go because they can afford to bribe the coach. Is it true that some coaches sold the coaches' names by taking money from the players or from their parents to take them on competitions? Is it true? Um, well, um, if you look at it, my own take is this. These allegations, you know, yes, to the so. But the approach to which we go for these tournaments are totally wrong. That is where I stand. You know, you want to go for a tournament under 17, under 20, and you, you give a job to a coach like four, six weeks to the tournament. So it's a bit difficult. You understand? I believe if we have a standard on the 17 league, on the 20 league, then the coaches can scout all through the year. And when it's time for competitions, they easily identify. But when you give them a crash course like four weeks to tournament, and they have to scout from about maybe thousands of players coming to Abuja, it's difficult to be get the best legs that, that in that format. So I'll, I'll fault the way we approach this tournament. The preparation is totally wrong. You understand? You can't give a coach four weeks to tournament and expect him to, you know, give you the best, the best. legs. It's a bit difficult. Mm. I agree with that, Coach. Prof, let me come to you on this one. Now, I remember that Dosu Joseph, three weeks ago, called the coaches that we have actually employed for the Super Eagles in the past, he called them mechanics. He says they are not coaches. So I brought him on the show, this show, and he confirmed that, yes, he called them mechanics, and he said why. Now, the reason I'm asking you this question, Prof, is that, listen, our coaches have proven to us that, listen, the, the foreign ones you have brought, Geno Raw, as an example, has proven that, listen, I don't have faith in the, the um, home base players. Look at Stephen Keshi of Blessed Memories. When we played Cote d'Ivoire, semi-finals, Nations Cup, the Ivorian coach said, listen, if I was going to draw a list of possible problems in Super Eagles, Sunday Mba would not be there. And it was the one that sports the Cote d'Ivoire's party that day, a home-based player. Yeah. Well, that's what you call the X factor and um, when you have a team without an X factor you are just as predictable as the northern star of course it will always shine and shine and shine on um the day general Tro made that statement he lost my respect completely he lost me that was when i knew that we do not have what you can ever call a coach and when you check his antecedent uh, this job obviously is too big for him. He was nowhere near. He had been uh, just um, travel, traveling, John Ketting at the backwaters of African football. All this unknown quantity, uh, abandoned and irrelevant countries. With due respect, I'm talking about football level now. This is the biggest job he had ever done, and I'm sure he will ever do. He has never won anything. He's not the guy that has a prerequisite just take the track record to handle the Super Eagles. Here we are. He's fumbling with the job. He had even told the nation, he had indicted that in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, a country that has 20 clubs in the NPSL, more at the NNL and so many others, that you cannot have one defender, one out of four. You cannot have one midfielder. There can never be one winger and there is nobody that can be a sub, even a sub for whoever is coming from overseas today. That tells you there is a disconnection between the man and the job. And what you have today is a charade, caricature, a huge joke, and something that we should never, ever have gotten into. No, I tell you, we have a stranger in General Trump who is disillusioned. Unfortunately, he lacks the charisma and the madness to actually do the job. So we are neither here nor there. How do we play? Do our wing style, is it still effective? Who is doing the magic in the middle? How do we plan to win again? We don't have any of this. So General Trump, please let me be on record. My name is Wale Adekoya. General Trump had actually been involved in a tacit racism <laughs> against Nigeria and Nigerians when you talk about football. Now, Coach, 
Let me come to you, coach, on this one. Now, coach, I think the beauty, the beauty of being a coach is to say, that boy, Victor Osime, in Napoli, is my product. That boy, Kelechi Yenacho, in Man City, or in Lister, is my product. But I think yeah. our coaches have become very, very lazy now. They, they, they prefer, like Genoro, for example, prefers to go for the ta already made talents. He doesn't believe in going to the Nigerian League and trying to groom somebody and say, okay, that guy there is my product. He doesn't want that. He wants already made cloth, brings it and play them. Okay. Well, you know, it, it depends. You know, when you look at it, it depends on the level of coaching you're referring to. At the national level, it's all about results. So you wouldn't blame him for looking for the best legs to help him achieve his set objectives on the pitch. You understand? So if you're looking at coaches to produce talent, then you have to come to the age rate, the under 20, the under 17. So I'll say for general, you can't blame him. It's all about results. If he doesn't deliver, you will be sent back in. So he wants the best legs to help him you know, achieve his goals on the pitch. Well, let, me ask, let, me, let me ask you, coach. I may be very naive on this one. I might not be a lawyer. I might not know how, how these documents are signed. But one thing I do know is that Gennot Raw is the coach of all our national teams including under 17 and under 21. If he's only dealing with Super Eagles, which means he can always go back into under 17 and groom them to the Super Eagles. That's his job. Is he the coach of the Super Eagles and there, not of our national teams? I might be well, wrong. For, I don't know. for my own knowledge, I believe we have under 17 coach. He's just, you know, keeping here and there. You understand? And I'll still go back. He's result orientated for him. If he doesn't deliver, he'll be sent back in. So you can't blame him if he's looking for the best legs to help him achieve what he set out to do. Like I said earlier, Sondimba came into the game against Cote d'Ivoire. Cote d'Ivoire were the cream de la cream of African football at that point. Did you Drogba, did you Zokora, Kolotore, Yahya Toure, the whole squad were in that thing, team. And we beat them 2-1. Second goal scored by a home base player, Mba, at that point. Look at the game against the um, Benin Republic in, 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 in Port Novo. It was okay. when this guy came in, Anayo Iwala, in the 81st okay. minute. And the game changed. The complexion of the game changed. A home base player, which means these guys have talent and they can change the complexion of the game anytime. Yes, you're right. The, the, the home base players are, are good players also. But everything to boil down to the coach style of play. You understand? And he, he gave them the opportunity. And we, the coaches back home, were happy that Anayo did well. Because, you know, some part of the media believe um, home base are not good enough. But he was able to represent the home base players well. So I'm sure he might get more opportunity going forward. So everything still goes back to the coach. He wants to win games. He wants to do it in the best way he understands how football is being played. And he wants to do that using the best legs in know. There is no doubt that our best legs are outside the country. Only we want to keep deceiving ourselves. Once you're too good, you leave Nigeria as soon as possible. So you won't blame him again. So I'm of the opinion that he has given the home base players an opportunity. And I'm glad Anayo took it well. Okay, now, um, Prof, let me come to you on this one. This is supposed to be a joke. I want to sound like a joke, but it's not a joke, really. If you are a teacher and you are an English teacher, and you bring your students into class, and 10 of them speak very good English, and the rest don't. Do you send those ones out and take care of the ones who speak good English, or try and make them the, get the best out of the ones who don't speak good English, and make sure at the end of the term they can speak good English? Yeah, coach says that Genoro only wants to work with the guys who are giving results now. So the ones who are not doing well, who play, in the home, who play at home, don't have a chance. They all don't finish. Uh, well, well, I want to disagree fundamentally with the coach. Yeah. Or maybe I would just pay him because don't forget, uh, while you're also talking to a coach yeah. because uh, you, know, you may not expect him to come on the air to say some things about another coach. True, true. That is the way I see it. He mentioned results. Let's assume that all Genatro wants or wanted is the result. The question is, have we gotten the result? Here is a man who earns more than the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And like you rightly pointed out, it's not just for the super egos. Football is a cycle, nine months. It's like a pregnancy. Any coach in the world must be able to say, in this season, in the league of the country where I coach, 
I discovered one superstar. Exactly. Well, Rooney was not allowed to do on the 17 or the 20 or what have you. The coach then said, hey, I've seen a superstar. Cristiano Ronaldo and so many others, they didn't go through the ranks. The world is up to every lot as an exception. It doesn't, it's not about the age. Age will now become a number. Every season, any coach that, what is why we say, this guy will be coming. It might not start. It may just be we are leading 4-0 and then uh, you want somebody to come and kill the next seven minutes. That is what you do. Ronaldo de Lima was warming up to so come in in, the, in that World Cup. But he couldn't because the, the, the completion of the game changed. That was why he couldn't feature in the other World Cup where he would have started. So what I'm saying is that when you talk about results, the national team is even beyond that football alone. It is the soul. It is the heartbeat. It is the mitochondria. It is the melting point of the nation's football. Once you, a player in all the 17, but at the time you are even saying uh, that somebody playing at home cannot, is not even good enough. The coach was talking about the age. All these boys that were brought from uh, overseas, are they old? Are they experienced? Who is the goalkeeper of the Super Eagles? He's a boy. He's not a professional. He's not a footballer. He's not a footballer. He's just a part-time guy. And now he's the coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. Wow. So what are we talking about? Okay, now. He's not even in Division 2. Coach, let me come I'm to you. I'm talking about Okoye, that we all know. Maluka Okoye, yes. He's a footballer. Coach, so the me... point I'm making is that let us forget about all these um, labels, age, location, pass, about, DNA, the power, the, inter the inner skills is all determined by where you are or where you are not. So I'm saying that you can never tell me that if one club has a minimum of 35 players in a season and we have 20, 20 times 35, you know, that's over 700, that you cannot find one and we are still paying him. And please, coach, don't tell us that uh, he, he, because he wants the best. The okay. guys is using even where they are coming from. They are not the best. Okay, Wale. Somebody from Kassim Pasam and so many names that you rather find in the Old Testament of the Bible. Okay, Wale. They are coming. Okay, Wale. Unknown quantities. Okay, Wale. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. I feel your passion. I can feel it. It's, it's, it's all, all over here. It's warm in here already. Thank you very much, Wale, for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay. Thank you. so much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the African Cup of Nations AFCON qualifying match between Nigeria's Super Eagles and their counterparts from Lesotho will be played under strict adherence to COVID-19 health protocols, CAF has ordered. Now, what this means is that the chance of Lagos fans watching their darling Eagles live at the Testing Balogun Stadium in Suleri on Tuesday is restricted to just a few thousand fans. Authorizing Nigeria as the first African nation to have so many fans in the stadium at this time speaks volume of CAF's confidence in the country and our ability to cope with strict COVID crowd control demands. Lagos has made plans to abide by CAS regulations by missing all requirements. Executive Chairman, Lagos State Sports Commission, Shola Ayekweku, stated. Ayekweku stated that though it's not the ideal condition for Eagles not to play before a full house on the return to their nest for their first competitive match in Lagos in 20 years, but Nigerians have to make sacrifices to ensure all things work out for our long-term good. Bearing in mind the unique situation COVID-19 has put the entire globe. The Crocodiles of Lesotho will arrive Lagos on Monday, that's today, for their final 2021 African Cup of Nations Group L qualifying game against Super Eagles at the Test in Balogun Stadium on Tuesday, that's tomorrow. The Crocodiles played out a goalless draw on Saturday with Sierra Leone dashing any hopes of qualification. The visitors will train at the Test in Balogun Stadium today by 5 p.m. Meanwhile, CAF has appointed Cape Verdean Fabricio Duarte as match referee with his compatriots Georgie Correa, Semedo Helio, assistant referee one, Delgado Fernandez, William Georgie, assistant referee two, and Antonio Emmanuel Fortes, Tony Rodriguez, a fourth official, also on duty. The match commissioner is Haruna Mawanda from Uganda, while Nick Owusu from Ghana will serve as security officer. Alex Kote, also from Ghana, is the referee's assessor. The match commissioner and referees arrived in Nigeria on Sunday, while the security officer and referees assessor have been in Lagos since Saturday. Anaya Wala is delighted to make his debut for the Super Eagles in Saturday's 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifier against the Squirrels of Benin Republic. 
He wore a replaced Henry Yekuru in the 81st minutes of the encounter. The Aimba winger took to the social media to celebrate his maiden appearance for the three-time African champions. Former Kada City star will hope to make his first start for the Super Eagles in Tuesday's dead rubber clash against the Crocodiles of Lesotho at the Sestin Balogun Stadium in Lagos. Now, some stunning news. Sudan stunned South Africa and South Africa crashed out of Nations Cup. From that group, only Sudan and Ghana qualify. We have highlights of that match and some more. Curtsy Calf. South Africa come crumbling. They will not be in Cameroon at the African Cup of Nations. Taken out by Sudan. Hmm. 2019 U.S. Open champion Bianca Andrescu moved into the last 16 of the Miami Open with a hard 4-3 set win over world number 32 Amanda Anisimova. Andrescu failed to capitalize on any of her 10 break points in the first set before claiming it's on a tie break, only for Anima Anima to drag the match into a decider. But the Canadian was eventually able to wrap up the contest 7-6, 6-7, in two hours and 40 minutes. Set up a match with Gabriel Muguruza in round four. Brilliant hold from Anisimova. We threw a lot of pressure situations and she could quickly have that back on her shoulders. Full stretch volley. Just able to take all the pace off the ball, open the racket head, hit an underspin. She could have hit it a little bit better, just a little bit closer to the net. It could have bounced back over on her side. And Samova taking full advantage of the second serve. And it's the variety that she has with it as well. The fact that she hits the inside out and the inside in. Flying wide. And a roar as she seals the opening set. Seven games to six. Terrific contest here, and it's Andreescu who just edges it in the tiebreak. Thrilling contest. And it's the move out, Muguruza next. Can Andrescu make this one happen? Who can stop this man now? Seven times Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton won a season opening Bahrain Grand Prix for Mercedes on Sunday after an epic knife edge thriller with Red Bull's Max Verstappen over the final laps. Verstappen, who passed the Britain with four laps to go, only to have to hand back the lead for exceeding track limits, finished the mere 0745 seconds behind after starting on pole position. Hamilton, who started second on the grid, took another of Michael Schumacher's all-time records with his 5,112 second race lap led in a strategic cat and mouse thriller. The victory was a record extending 96th for Hamilton, continuing also his run of winning in every season of his career since his debut with McLaurin in 2007, for the first time he had won an opener since 2015. I think the race was fun until that point, the start, uh, the first couple of laps, some, some battles with uh, my old colleagues and uh, uh, I did enjoy but obviously now you are disappointed not to see the checkered flag. Uh, feels okay but I think there's a lot of space to improve this race so um, just to, to get tomorrow, uh, next, ne next Imola. Of course I'm, I'm disappointed about today but last year we will be super happy with a race like this so it also shows how much we have grown and I think uh, it's, a, it's still a positive start to the season, and uh, it's still a long season ahead, so I see it as uh, only seven points dropped, and uh, we'll, we'll try to do better next time. We stopped so early, um, quite shorter than our, our planned strategy, so even with the strategy lap that I would have stopped, that was already going to be difficult to keep him behind, but he went so much longer and had much fresher tyres, so I, I, um, I knew that I was... And then they said, like, he's going to catch you with 10 laps to go, and I was thinking, wow, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but you know, we knew this weekend and through testing that we we're going to be on the back foot, and there's been a lot of worry, I think, in the team, but we pulled it through. 
Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. That's all we can take on the show today. You know, same time tomorrow for another super edition. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.